Hi, welcome to Tessera's Nerf Room. This is not a video that I was gonna make at all. And truthfully, it took an insane amount of convincing to take a look at the blaster that we're gonna be taking a look at today. So, as you probably know, one of my favorite blasters in history is the Hammer Shot. The Hammer Shot is as close to the perfect pistol as Hasbro has ever gotten, and probably will ever get. This is a small, compact, five-dart revolver that has a hammer prime, and can be upgraded to do horrifyingly insane things, like Valiant's kind of failed to do, but I still love it anyway. But the Hammer Shot really holds a special place in my heart and a lot of other people's hearts. And also, a lot of people probably remember how Zombie Strike is one of my least favorite series ever made. And it really is. I don't like Zombie Strike. Because after the Hammer Shot and the Sledgefire and the Sling Fire and the original release of Zombie Strike, the first couple years were so good, that's when the crap came in. And ever since that point, Zombie Strike was littered with nothing but bad gimmicks after bad gimmicks after bad gimmicks. So, when I hear about Zombie Strike 2.0 coming out, I'm very pessimistic about it and was not at all interested in taking a look at any of the blasters that were going to be in the catalog, especially because we know what happens when Nerf adds 2.0 to any of their boxes. Bad things happen. You know this. So, when this blaster was first unveiled and I first saw it, I wanted nothing to do with it. I wanted to get as far away from it as possible because even just looking at it, the blaster was so ugly that I just didn't want it in my collection at all. And uh, as you can see, that has changed. Because in this box is the sort of reinvention of the hammer shot, the Nerf Zombie Driller. And it took a lot of convincing for me to get this blaster. Mainly Double Punch Pro Nerfer is responsible for this, but several other people requested that I look at this blaster as well. I put a poll on my channel asking people if they wanted me to review this thing, and while not enough people actually cleared the vote for me to like properly acknowledge, yes, people want a review, the votes were still relatively positive. It was still an 85% yes. So that leads me to believe that people do want me to take a look at the driller. And if nothing else, this blaster's review will tell people why not to buy it. I am terrified to open this box because I've seen pictures of this thing online. And yesterday, I actually saw it in person for only a couple seconds. I didn't really get that good of a look at the blaster because, well, I saw it as we were going out of the aisle, but I saw enough. Okay, yep, here's the box. This is pretty much gonna be my first time seeing this in person. Oh man. Ugh. All right, so uh, first impressions, it's not as revolting to look at as I remembered it from the store, but this is not good, this is bad. This is bad. Uh, look at the back. It has 16 darts, and its only real selling point is the scope that you can put on the top of the blaster. Yeah, this, I've got my work cut out for me today. That's up. Uh, that's out goes the blaster. And then we have the scope that looks just as bad if not even worse. But luckily the scope has screws in it, so I might actually be able to open it and uh, paint it. Now we gotta get the darts, which are of course located under platform where this blaster should reasonably be located. You open this, you open that, and oh, there's nothing keeping the darts from just falling right out. Alrighty, so now everything is on the floor, so. I'm gonna go get all this situated really quick. So we have the blaster, the scope, which just goes on the world's smallest tactical rail and doesn't stick, there we go. And 16 darts, which almost look like original zombie strike darts, but are a more neon looking green rather than the sort of bright, nice green that the zombie strike darts were. And this thing looks, this is bad. This is not a good design at all, but Let's test out the grip. Okay, 
Uh, it's, it's not the worst thing in the world. I could actually get behind this grip. Um, the trigger pull is surprisingly snappy. All right, that's a pleasant surprise. The hammer has a spring return, which is very dumb. And it is just a five dart cylinder. I think it is the same cylinder as the hammer shot had. Okay, here's another thing that this blaster has going for it right out of the gate. The cylinder actually like has a little click when it goes into place. That's pretty good. Though it is very hard to rotate because most of the cylinder is covered up. Let's load this thing up for the first time. Alrighty, we've got the driller loaded. Uh... Yeah, so it's not the worst thing I've ever seen, but it is, uh, it leaves a lot to be desired. <laughs> So this is a 2024 release out of Hasbro starring in the new Nerf Zombie series, which I guess is supposed to be like Zombie Strike 2.0, since this is very clearly capitalizing off of Zombie Strike's success, if that's what you want to call it, mainly capitalizing off the success of their original releases, not all of the horrific gimmicks that passed later on. But this blaster did seem like it was trying to reinvent the hammer shot, which doesn't seem like a bad idea since the hammer shot is kind of old at this point and seems like a newer version is warranted but uh, you know what happens when Hasbro tries to reinvent something and you know what happens when they put 2.0 in front of any of their series names it's it's not good I mean like the stripe is just fine and they came out with the Phoenix yeah Phoenix sucks the hammer shots just fine and now they came out with this so how bad is this one let's find out First, we gotta talk about the design, and I actually do want to go over this with you guys because it's very easy to look at this blaster and just decide that it is an ungodly mishmash of trash mashed together, but that's not really what they were going for. The actual design concept of the driller is an all right one. I like to call this concept Chaos Graffiti, where basically it is a whole bunch of little designs that are tightly packed together in order to give the blaster tons upon tons of personality. Now there are blasters where the Chaos Graffiti style was done extremely well, namely the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles blasters or various Zuru skins blasters. The Zuru Last Stand that I'm holding right here is a pretty good example of it because as you can see, there's a lot of details on here that make the blaster look like it has a sort of pseudo camouflage style, but if you look at it a little bit closer, you can see tons upon tons of intricate little details, like the skull right over here, or the four stars on the side. It is a pretty cool looking design that both looks good from a distance and when you're up close and looking at the blaster personally. And on the surface, the Chaos Graffiti style for this blaster is a very good idea. I do think that there is reason to put this style of art design on different blasters, and doing it on Zombie Strike blasters is one of the best things imaginable. Because Zombie Strike blasters are mainly just different tools and stuff that have been bolted together into blasters, having this sort of chaotic design on it makes perfect sense. The problem with this design is the fact that it isn't just Chaos Graffiti, but the fact that they did the Chaos Graffiti, which already added a ton of details, and then they added all these like Splatoon style paint splotches on top of them. So if you actually look at the blaster, this is a random paint splotch, this is a random paint splotch, all this is random. This is random. If you look over here, what is going on with this? There is just more paint for the sake of there being more paint, like down here. It just looks like the, the grip is molding and you can't see the actual detail. If you flip the blaster over, it gets even worse. There's even more paint and it's like covering up actually good looking details to the point where you almost can't make out what is going on with the blaster at all. You have to legitimately stare at this blaster for an extremely long period of time to realize any detail that's on here. Let me point out a couple of my favorite details. There's obviously the warning label right here and these ropes going across, but what you might not have noticed is that there's actually lettering in this graffiti that spells out NERF. So you can see this is an N, here's an E, the R's been covered up by this yellow pattern, and then there's an F over there that's kind of hidden by the ropes. But if you look at it very closely, you can make it out. And on the other side, if they didn't print the warning labels on, you could see that that actually says or nothing, but most of it is hidden behind stuff. If it wasn't for this warning label, you could see N-O-T-H-I-N-G, but the thing is, there's more paint over here, so all you can see is half of an O and a T. 
Seriously, adding more details does not make the blaster look better, it just sometimes makes it more details for the sake of there being more details. The scope at the very least has the ability to kind of play with the idea that the details have been rusted on where it's like it used to look clean but it's been rusted away and the details were just painted in to like fill in the gaps. You can see that it's got like this caution tape that's been faded off as if it was used a tremendous amount and back here you can see that it's kind of like the green is fading and that the details are blending into the fading and I honestly think that the scope works way better with this style of chaotic design than the blaster itself. This scope looks good, and I've been looking at this scope for a while, and I don't mind the way that it looks at all. I will happily use this thing just as it is. I don't even know if I want to paint it, but the blaster itself just looks ridiculous. On that note, though, I am going to point out something that you guys probably haven't seen. The actual shape of the shell. If we take off the scope, and I just put it in my pocket really quick, you can see that the shape of this blaster is not bad at all. It's got a very nice shape to it and will definitely be used tremendously well for paint jobs and stuff. It's got just the same amount of personality as the original hammer shot did in a completely different way. This blaster does feel like some form of industrial power drill that you just hold on to and would use to drill into things. And even though this big goofy barrel seems like it doesn't make any sense on the surface, it actually does. This is the kind of wide drill bit that you would use to like drill out a big hole in a desk to put a button through to put wires through. It makes sense. If you actually study the details of the physical blaster's design, they start to make sense after a moment, and it doesn't look as hideous as I originally thought this thing looked just from looking at pictures of it. Because when I saw this thing in pictures, it looked like it was just a flat body with this weird circle thing on it and a big stupid looking barrel. Just abhorrent. Holy crap, that segment went on for a long time. Let's get to the ergonomics. This blaster just has a main grip, but it also has this rail on the bottom, so you could potentially put a foregrip here, and you might actually want to, and I will address that in a second. But if we take a look at the main grip, it is actually, for me, very comfortable but it won't be as comfortable for everybody else. As you can see, it's got this sort of drill battery on the bottom of it that also acts as a form of grip guard. The problem is the grip guard is very small and my smaller than average hands barely have enough room to clear the grip guard and actually use it rather comfortably as a pinky rest. It's a really weird experience having a grip guard that perfectly fits my hand, but it does perfectly fit my hand. And for me, I love the grip. It is super smooth and filleted. The problem is if you have any bigger hands than I do, they're not going to fit comfortably within this grip guard and you're going to end up having to do the, oh, I'm feeling so fancy today. Fancy cup of tea, gentlemen, style holding the blaster with your pinky sticking out. And that's not very fun to use. I complained about this in the Ace review, and this blaster is going to run into the same problem if you have even decently sized hands. So how does this blaster work? Well, it is a five dart revolver. So you put in up to five darts inside of the cylinder, and then after that, it's a hammer prime blaster, very similarly to the hammer shot, but not exactly the same. You pull down this hammer to rotate and prime the blaster and then let go, and it bounces back to the top, and it doesn't rotate the cylinder if you advance it again, so I don't actually know why they did that. And then you pull the trigger to fire once. That actually stuck perfectly in the target. But this mechanism is very, very weird because it feels the same as the hammer shot, but they've added another linkage to make the, the hammer spring back to the top. I don't know why that was added. I'm not sure if anybody wanted that, but it's really weird. And then you can do it up to five times. And the mechanism itself is actually pretty smooth. Using the cylinder, it's very smooth. It actually has a very satisfying click, which is way better than the original hammer shots. The hammer prime is incredibly smooth and well lubricated, and the trigger is very snappy. It is a very nice trigger, and I'd honestly say that the trigger itself is an improvement over the hammer shots. And now we get to my least favorite design detail on the whole blaster. Why is there a four dart storage in the battery when there's room for five? Why? Why? Just put the extra dart storage there, Hasbro. It probably would have saved money because they would have had another hole in the shell rather than it being a solid piece of the shell. Why didn't they do that? That would have just been so easy. But they cheaped out on it and it makes it stupid. Firing demo.
You know, in the product pictures of this blaster, they show a little kid holding it. If there's any little kid on the planet that you know of that will successfully be able to prime this blaster one-handed without a trigger guard, please tell me who they are and show me a video of them priming it because I would love to see it. So yeah, I don't know if this is true or not, but it seems like the hammer is substantially further away from the grip than the original hammer shots. The hammer shot I can prime comfortably with one hand. This one is an actual chore to try doing that with because my thumb can't even reach the hammer from its default position. I have to heavily adjust my grip on the blaster upwards and crank it down in order to prime it, similarly to the Dart Zone Outlaw. But this blaster makes that even worse because of its lack of a trigger guard, which makes sense thematically, but also means that you can't flip it, which is a terrible sin against this blaster's function. But luckily, I can do this. You can't stop me from flipping my blaster, Hasbro. I will flip my Hasbro blaster as I will flip you off, Hasbro. So remember when I was talking about this bottom rail earlier? Well, if you actually take a foregrip and put it on there, you can use it effectively in order to give yourself more leverage to prime the blaster off of. And it makes priming it a whole lot easier being able to use the foregrip. The biggest problem with the way that this blaster is out of the box is how hard it is to actually prime it naturally unless you've got giant hands. And if you do have giant hands, they won't be able to fit within the grip guard. And you can't even hold it like a real pistol because there's no trigger guard, so it ends up smushing your pinky finger, no, it ends up smushing your index finger when you actually go to pull the trigger. And it sucks. No matter how you use this blaster, if you don't put a foregrip on there, it is hard to use it. And that's sad, because this is supposed to be, I guess, user-friendly-er than the hammer shot, but it ends up making the hammer shot look more user-friendly than it actually is by comparison. So what do I think of the driller? Is it actually as horrible as I originally thought it was? No. This blaster is actually decently usable. I wouldn't even go anywhere near the idea that this blaster is good, but it can offer you a platform to give some pretty cool paint jobs to and offer as an interesting cosplay piece, among other things. As well as the fact that the spring return hammer, while useless, does give the blaster a bit more personality than nerfs other hammer actions. And out of the box, the functionality is decent enough that you could theoretically use this thing in a nerf war. I don't know why you'd want to when the hammer shot exists but you could use it in a nerf war just it's not very fun to use one-handed and it's not very fun to use two-handed either because of the way that this setup is designed but i think what the biggest question on everybody's minds is should you get this over a hammer shot <laughs> absolutely not go buy a hammer shot instead if you're looking for anything functional though i do see why some people would like this blaster and if you do want to get this blaster i'll leave a link for it in the description below even though twenty dollars is an abhorrent price for something like this thanks for watching bye <laughs>